so hello friends welcome back and in this video we are going to see some of the special properties of prime numbers and um, we will also study about the factors and also how to find the factors of the number then we will study some of the basic properties or you can say the good properties of hcf and lcm which will help you a lot although we will not study hcf very deeply we will study deeply in number theory part and same with the prime numbers we will study it deeply in number theory part but yeah here we will see some of the basic and the good properties or you can say facts about the prime numbers so starting with what actually is a prime number a number is called prime if it has factors 1 and itself so the example of prime factors are 2 3 5 7 11 13 like and so on and so forth the interesting fact about prime number is that every prime number can be represented as 6n plus 1 or 6n minus 1 except 2 and 3 if you can say that number 7 it is 6 plus 1 right and you can say number 11 which is 6 into 2 minus 1 so every number which is a prime it can be represented as 6n plus 1 or 6n minus 1 except 2 and 3 and uh, like the next one which is 2 and 3 are the two only consecutive natural numbers which are prime except all these the numbers which are prime are separate apart like they have gap of 1 2 or more so to compute the prime factors and prime numbers we will study number theory part as i said so yeah we will only study here some interesting facts about it now uh, let's move on to the factors so all the numbers which divide a number completely which means that without leaving any remainder are called as the factors of a number for example if i say a number 24 so all the numbers from 1 up till the number 24 which divides the number 24 completely are its factors which means that number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 number 5 number 6 number 8 number 12 and number 24 all these numbers divide the particular number 24 completely so i can say that all these numbers are its factors now each of these number is called a factor of 24 as i said that each of these number are called a factor of 24 and 24 is called a multiple of each of these number like if i say that like the multiple of 1 so i will say that 2 like since see uh, every number is a multiple of 1 so yeah uh, if if i say that num- multiple of 4 so 4 8 like 4 8 like i will say like so and so forth so in that number 24 will also come so if i want to find the multiple i will just write what i used to write in when i was young so 1 into 4 4 into 2 8 4 into 3 12 so these are the multiples of 4 right so like it's uh, you can say that these numbers are the factors of 24 and 24 is a multiple of these numbers very fine so now uh, let's see how to find the factors because to find the factor it is used a lot a lot i mean say a lot so to find the factors of a number like firstly we know see what what, what i said in the beginning that uh, factor is any number from 1 up till the number n which means that if i need to find the factors of n so any number between 1 and n which divides the number n completely so i will just see the thing which i read okay every number from 1 to n so i will take all the numbers from 1 to n and i will check okay uh, if it completely divides the number n or not if it is then i will say that it's a factor if it is not then i will say it's not a factor so uh, i will just see it's a code from gfc although it's a very small code you can write it from yourself also uh, like it was written so i just took it from there but yeah uh, see every number i will iterate from every number from 1 up till n see in the case here i need to find the factors of n so any number i will iterate from 1 up till n and i will check if that number completely divides our number n if it means that n mod i should be equal to 0 which means that it should not have any remainder if it completely divides n so i can say that my number i is a factor so i can clearly say that okay it's a pretty easy code and it's like what we learn what is a factor it is doing the same thing now the complexity of this code is o of n because the loop is running from 1 up till n very fine now what if i need to reduce the time complexity of this program very fine so let's analyze it, uh, 
the factors and all these a bit deeply. For example, if I need to take the factors of a number 10, so the factors would be 1, 2, 5 and 10. Now if you clearly see that these numbers are appearing in pair, which means that 1 and number 10 are appearing in pair, number 2 and number 5 are appearing in pair. Now how I am saying appearing in pair? Appearing in pair means that 1, like if I have 1, so I can easily find out number 10 here. If I have a number 2, I can easily find a number 5. How? Number, which is number n, if, I, if, if it is number n, then n upon the factor which I already have. So it will give me another factor. Okay, fine. So like, is it valid for every case? I mean, like if I have any number, so is it like, is it always true that it will always be in pair? For example, let's take a number 100. So let's take a number 100. So its factor will be 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50 and 100. I can clearly say that number 1 and 100 appear in pair, number 2 and 50 appear in pair, number 4 and number 25 appear in pair, number 5 and number 20 appear in pair. What about the number 10? So you can clearly say that if I say that, okay, 100 upon number 10, it will be nothing but the number 10 itself. So the numbers are same. So when will the number be same? Which means that the number right here, which is below, which means if I say it as x and the number right here, which is above, which is x. So x into x should be equal to the number n, which is this n. So which means that x into x should be equal to n, which means x is equal to square root of n, which means that the number n, if it is a perfect square so it will have odd number of factors but if it is not a perfect square then it will have even number of factors for example number 36 for example if i do its factor so 1 36 right let's make it 2 18 very fine then next 3 number 12 very fine then 4 okay 4 and number 9 very fine then for 5 or 6, 6. So you can clearly see that it has, see, why I'm saying odd number of factors because all the other numbers will appear in pair. So it will be even and one number will appear in extra because it is a perfect square and I will repeat only number once. Now you will learn two things from here. One thing is that every perfect square number has odd number of factors. Second thing which you will learn is every non-perfect square number has even number of factors. Now, the result which you learned here, uh, it will not only help you in your puzzles for your interviews, because I have seen four puzzles regarding the same logic, the same thing, which means that, uh, you know, that a, a number which is a perfect square has odd factors, it will help you in your puzzles as well. Secondly, it will help you to drive, okay, the relation which we are going to see, how to find the factors in square root of n time. Now, uh, so like, as I said that, okay, for the number a1, if you know the number a1, you can easily find the last number, which is n upon a1. If you know the a2, you can find n upon a2, a3, n upon a3, a4, n upon a4. And if it is a perfect square, then we will have a5, which is a unique number, which means that n upon a5 will also be equal to the a5. Now, as I said that we have two important properties that every perfect square number has odd number of factors and every other number has even number of factors. The above one is very important. You need to, you know, remember it for your puzzles part for your interviews. Now, the main thing, how to find the factors in square root of n time. As I said that I see what I'm, what I was doing was I was iterating up till the square root of n, right? Now, after that, I know that I will find my other pairs with the help of the initial pairs. So I will just run my loop and earlier what I was doing earlier, I was running my loop from one up till n. Now I will run my loop from one up till the square root of n part. So what I will do is I will run my loop from one up till the square root of n. Let me change the color. Then I will check. Okay. If the number actually divides n completely, so it is a factor. Now, if it if the number i is a factor so firstly i can have two cases what is the one case one case is that either it is the number which is making the number a perfect square or 
it is a number which is not making it a perfect square which means that it can be either a number a1 type or a5 type so if it is a5 so i need to count it only once but if it's a1 type so i need to have the n upon a1 also so i will do the same thing that if it is a1 type sorry if it is a5 type which means like uh, here so it should be it should follow the property that n upon i should be equal to i if it is then i need to only have it once but if it is not then i need to have my i as well as n upon i because these both are the factors of that number then i will ultimately print my all the factors of a number so yeah like it's the main thing which you need to do now let's move on to the hcf and lcm part hcf is highest common factor and lcm is lowest common multiple now uh it's lcm let's start with lcm so lcm as the word says that it's the lowest common multiple now as the word itself says lowest or you can say least common multiple so if like for of two or more numbers is the smallest number other than zero which is a multiple of each number which means that if i have number 4 and 6 so i need to find a lowest multiple of these two numbers as i said that if i need to find the multiples of 4 i will write it as 4 8 like so on and so forth so for the multiples of 6 i will write it as 6 12 18 24 so you can clearly see that the lowest number which occur which is occurring in both of these are number 12 so my number 12 is the lowest common multiple so see the word itself says that i need to find the multiple of both the numbers a and b and the lowest number which appear in both of these is its lowest common multiple now same is like hcf highest common factor so hcf of two or more given numbers is the highest number which exactly divides all the numbers which means that a number 12 and 16 i need to find the factors which the highest factor which divides both of these numbers so i will write the factors of number 12 and 16 so the factors of 12 are 1 2 3 4 6 12 factor of 16 are 1 2 4 8 16 the highest number out of these two which is common in both of these is 4 which means that 4 is the highest number which divides both number 12 and 16 although the factors which are common are 1 2 and 4 but out of these highest one is 4 so i can clearly say that my hca which means highest common factor is 4 these two other things which are used a lot especially in problem b and in problem a as well but yeah mostly in problem b so yeah you need to study and understand hcf and lcm very very carefully so in c++ we have the inbuilt gcd function which is underscore underscore gcd which is for the hcf so hcf and gcd are the same things so by using the underscore underscore gcd and brackets a and b you can find the gcd of a and b now like Although you study GCD or you can say HCF very deeply, like the whole proof and everything in the number theory part, and I'm also thinking to start number theory with uh, mathematics side by side. So yeah, now the properties which are important for the GCD is the first one is that the GCD of A and B is GCD of B and A mod B, which means that if I have number A and B, then the GCD obtained would be same if I replace my A with B and my B with A mod B. so the gcd would be same and the gcd of any number with zero is the number itself yeah it's a very 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 important property you need to learn it now the last thing you you can see the last formula which you need to remember is that a into b is equals to their hcf and lcm which means that lcm of a and b into hcf of a and b is nothing but a into b although you will study everything like the whole proof of gcd and all in the number theory so yeah like we only need to study about in mathematics the basic formulas and how we can use and what properties we can use so yeah it's all that we learn about the factors of the facts about prime numbers we learn about factors and we learn about hcf and lcm so in the next video we will see more interesting topics so yeah until then be happy in coding so yeah bye